first um, on my agenda was to update my fall prevention material. And that's what I'd like to g run through with uh, those of you who have taken my Level 1 and Level 2 courses. And so let me share um, the following with you. Some of the strategies that I'm going to be covering in the this year's courses that uh, I have not spoken to you of in the past was the medication check, footwear, vision, and specific balance strategies. On the medication check, this is something that came to my attention the last time I went to the pharmacy, which was just last week, and picking up some things I went, wow, that's very interesting, that the uh, province of Ontario is now instituting a meds check, which is a private pharmacy consultation that the pharmacist gives you up to 30 minutes once a year. It's covered by OHIP. So for any Ontarian who has a chronic condition or taking three or more medications, and we all know that that's one of the things that put people at risk for falls is the number of medications they're on, you uh, may want to make a recommendation to your clients to uh, bring their OHIP card. All current medication containers that they are um, taking, including vitamins and herbal supplements, and they can either go online or uh, to book or uh, contact their local pharmacist. The other um, items under balance come from a fall prevention workshop that was held in Ottawa uh, this past June. It was probably one of the better lectures that I attended this year. It was sponsored uh, partly by the City of Toronto, Shoppers Drug Mart, and a lot of the pre presenters came from CODA. It was uh, very, very good, and I want to uh, carry through s some of the highlights of the talk. First and foremost was footwear and fall risk and some of the studies um, showing that walking indoors whether barefoot or in socks as well as wearing high heel shoes either in or outdoors, I don't know why anybody would care to do that indoors, but um, that wearing the, that type of footwear has been shown to increase the risk of falls especially in older people and hence you know we should be making the recommendations of avoiding shoes with elevated heels or soft soles and you know especially in the winter months with more and more of our seniors spending most of the day indoors they're tending to walk around in slippers that are very soft soled and that is going to put them at further risk for falls. So what are the recommendations in terms of footwear that our seniors should be looking for? For optimal dynamic stability when walking on even or uneven surfaces they should look for standard lace shoes they should look for shoes that have low collars and that the sole um, be of standard hardness whether they have a good tread or not. Next on the agenda is vision strategies for fall prevention and there's a, a very interesting researcher Stephen Lord out of Australia who's spending a lot of time looking at this his references at the end and he has um, shown that you know um, recommending cataract surgery when it is appropriate um, will help maximize vision and hence help with fall prevention. A lot of our uh, seniors have not um, gone for regular eye checkups and hence uh, you know correct prescriptions and updated glasses is also another important category for for vision strategy. Multifocal glasses. Now this is really interesting because multifocal glasses you know, sort of have become sort of the in thing. But what has also been found is that they're impairing distance contrast sensitivity and depth perception in the lower visual field. So that um, it's meaning on a practical basis that older people that are wearing multi multifocal glasses or bifocal or trifocal glasses have a harder time to detect environmental hazards. This is, uh, you know, going to show up where they're more likely to fall when they're outside their homes or walking up or down stairs. So multifocal or bifocals uh, should be replaced with single vision or distance lenses for outdoor use, especially when using public transportation, stair negotiating, or walking in an unfamiliar environment. So those are some really good um, tips that I got out of uh, reading uh, Stephen Lord's paper. Um, lastly was balance strategies and it was very inter interesting to listen to Sandra McKay talk about the change in support balance recovery reactions that 
they're studying. And these are reactions that are either stepping strategies or reaching movement strategies that people adopt. And these are replacing, you know, what we used to consider or um, think about training individuals with for hip strategies or ankle strategies. And in studying how people respond to, you know, significant changes in perturbations, they're finding that the change in support balance rea recovery reactions is really where we need to be moving the direction we need to be moving in. So keeping this in mind, and the fact that we know um, that age-related decreases in neural, sensory, and musculoskeletal system contributes to specific aspects of change in support strategies. And we have to pay particular importance for the prevention of hip fractures. And this is um, brings to light the evidence showing you know restricted control and lateral stability. So with my clients, I've started um, tr trying to elicit more lateral stepping strategies. And in doing so, I'd, um, I want to, you know, show you a couple of the videos that we took um, using Miss um, McLaren, who is 93 years old, God bless her, and uh, a very willing uh, participant in all of my, uh, my work with her. And I'm going to show you a video where she is doing some lateral stepping when we first initiated it back in the fall, and then some recent work that we did with her um, just last week and showing her uh, rate of improvement. Now at 93, um, just asking her to step laterally sometimes is a, a, um, a surprise unto itself. You know, a lot of the studies are saying that you need to, you know, do it in, in sort of a spontaneous manner so that you're not having too much cortical involvement and pre-planning. And, uh, you know, fortunately, um, Ms. McLaren forgets often from time to time, you know, what would what we've done in the past, but her body tends not to forget, and hence you'll see a great improvement. So um, I'm going to end this with just giving you the list of references and uh, wish you all a very successful 2010. This initial um, video was taken in October, and this was not the first time that I had Ms. McLaren do the crossover, but it was... Um, still at a point where she forgot from time to time that we had practiced the crossover. So I would review how to do the step, you know, as she was sitting on her bed, I would, you know, kind of let her visually see what I was going to ask her, of her to do. And, uh, you know, knowing that, um, you know, it was, it had been quite a few years actually since she had done any crossover work. She hadn't been dancing through her eighties or anything like that. And so, um, she found it quite challenging. Um, the forward crossovering, crossovers were easier for her than the backward crossovers. And because of her anxiety, I worked in front of her bed initially because she knew at least she had a safe landing if uh, she was going to lose her balance. And so initially we'd actually just kind of scan the perimeter of her bed in the first few weeks. And so um, what you're seeing now is, you know, again, you know, sort of a month of... Uh, into, you know, having had um, some opportunities to practice this. So this was uh, what I thought was actually a very good success on her part and, and good improvement. And so uh, you'll notice that she is um, without solid shoes on that one. She's still without solid shoes here. She tends to wear um, shoes that are very soft-soled and, you know, as with most seniors, they're quite resistant to changing their footwear. Now you look how smooth she is here and she's a lot more comfortable uh, doing this lateral stepping away from her bed, you know, out in the open hallway. And this is, you know, three months into, you know, the occasional sidestepping that we do. So I don't repeat the same balance training with her every time. I try to mix things up, have her do, you know, four square stepping, having to change in directions, you know, head turns, these kind of things. So. Um, this grapevine stepping is combining both the forward and the backward side stepping. And unlike um, the studies where D uh, Dr. McKay and associates had uh, done some great perturbation based training where they used sophisticated platforms, um, unfortunately most of us don't have access to these sophisticated platforms and so we are, you know, as creative as we can be with our training but still um, with great results.